Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In the last video, we demonstrated how to use frequency separation as a means to achieve tack sharp images without introducing unsightly artifacts. In this video, we're going to be using frequency separation again, but this time for portrait retouching. This is another topic which I'm sure is confusing to a lot of people. So in this video, we're going to answer a few questions. First, we're going to answer the question, what is frequency separation? Second, we're going to answer why you need frequency separation in portrait retouching. And third, we're going to answer how is frequency separation used to correct portraits. First, let's do a review of what frequency separation is, which was also discussed in our last video. Frequency separation separates color, tone, and texture into high frequency and low frequency layers. A blur filter and high pass filter are applied to create the low and high frequency layers. And we've also mentioned that this is used for portrait retouching primarily. Next, why do we even use frequency separation for portrait retouching? The reason it is used for portrait retouching is it allows you to retouch shadows and colors separately from skin texture and vice versa. You use the high frequency layer to fix blemishes and wrinkles, while you use the low frequency layer to adjust color or light and shadows. So let me illustrate this with an example. Let's try to reduce the shadows around this lady's eyes. And for that, we're going to be using the dodge tool to lighten the dark areas. Notice that while the shadows are being brightened, the wrinkles within these shadows are also being affected such that the texture on the wrinkles are actually losing contrast. That may not be what you want. Maybe the wrinkles give the face character, or maybe the brightening operation looks unnatural. Whatever it may be, the dodging operation is affecting the texture in addition to the color. Now let's try the same operation but with frequency separation. As you can see here, the dodging is done on a low frequency layer that in no way affects the contrast or detail of the wrinkles. And here is a comparison of the results. So that's what it means when frequency separation allows you to retouch shadows and colors separate from skin texture. So now let's go into detail on how you use frequency separation to correct a portrait. Let's demonstrate the process using this portrait right here. The first step we're going to do is to duplicate the layer. I'll rename the background layer to original. Next, I'll click filter. Then I'll click frequency separation. That will show us a preview of the high frequency and low frequency images. Adjust the radius till you see details or texture that needs to be removed. Once done, click apply. Now let's observe the current state of the layer panel. The single image layer has been replaced with two layers, a high frequency layer and a low frequency layer. Let me hide the original layer. Note that the high frequency layer is blended with a low frequency layer via a linear light blend mode. Notice as well that the result of this blend is the original image itself. While the blend will look like the original image, the individual layers looks nothing like the original image. Let's look at the high frequency layer in isolation by hiding the low frequency layer. As you can see here, the high frequency layer is a gray layer with darkened edges and details. This layer is used to remove blemishes and wrinkles and overall improve the texture of the skin. Now let's look at the low frequency layer. As you can see here, the low frequency image is simply the original image with a blur applied. This layer is used to adjust tones and color. Now let's smoothen the skin by adjusting the high frequency layer first. So I'm going to unhide the high frequency layer and make sure it is selected. Then I'll use the healing brush tool to remove the blemishes and clear up the skin.
Notice that I am applying the healing brush on the gray high frequency layer, not on the original image. You can see this clearly when I hide the low frequency layer. Of course, you can use any of Affinity's object removal tools to get rid of blemishes. For more prominent blemishes, Affinity has a dedicated blemish tool. Let me use that to remove some of the more prominent blemishes. Okay, that's looking good. So now let's do a preliminary comparison to see the improvement. I'll duplicate the original layer and drag it to the top. And here is the before and the after. Now that I'm satisfied with the blemish removal I've done, let's move on to the low frequency layer to improve color and skin tone. I'll click on the dodge tool and paint on the eyes to brighten it and make it more the focus of attention. Next, I'll enhance the saturation of the eyes to make sure it stands out a little bit more. For that, I'll use an HSL adjustment. I'll use the picker to select the eye color. Then I'll increase the saturation. If the adjustment is way too much, you can always decrease the effect by reducing the opacity of the layer. So here is the before and the after. So that's how you use frequency separation for portrait retouching. I hope this video made this confusing concept a little bit clearer. Do let me know if you use frequency separation in your own portrait retouching or what method you like to use. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.